Hello, this is Captain Poodle speaking. Are you ready to find love? Yes, ahoy, matey. Love. Do, 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 do. Exciting and new. Ooh. Go online. Hmm. They're catfishing you. Shocker. Fiance. Soon you'll be flying to parts unknown. 90 day Beyonce. Marrying someone you only met on your phone. Be they French or Chinese, a brand new K1 visa's the key. Ooh, the key to what, Poodle? To love. <laughs> it's reality, yay. Let's love. Welcome to Happily Ever After, season finale. And if I seem rushed, it's because my mother just came home from the grocery store. Okay, you're just trying to get that nut off before they open the door. <laughs> and even though I told her, um, don't come in here and, and don't come in here because we're recording, uh, I think she might forget. But I'm also afraid Muffin, her dog, may have come in and may try to give me the stink eye. <laughs> <laughs> And stare at me and maybe jump up and, and paw at the door because it's, it's windows so I can see her. We got to get you in that bunker for the next show. I know. I might have to be in the, my, my brother's QAnon <laughs> bunker. <laughs> my brother did mention to me, it's, I got to get him away from the friend who keeps sending him emails about illegal immigration. Um, and he said, is it true that in California they don't really care about illegal immigration? I said, it's true in the state you're in. They, <laughs> I hate to tell you, you need so many illegal immigrants to do everything here. It's tr they're, they're everywhere. I said, every time you go in a store, I said, every time someone is doing something, they're illegal. I just terrified him. <sighs> He's like, really? And I'm like, yeah, that's just how much you know. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> read and listen to news that's out of your realm. Uh, your world or view. or try a world based news service like Reuters, as I like I always push. Yeah, I enjoy NPR. Um, all right, everybody. This is season seven, episode seventeen. Our part two of this. Um, again, the season we, finale. We might we be interrupted told. by. Muffin the Boykin Spaniel. <laughs> We're going to do our best. Finally, Poodle found It'd some be, good light. Be just like her. I finally got into good lighting, except for the little bit of lighting that's in oh, my Good, because Christina, our producer, was, is going to lose her shit when she's editing part one of her intimate I portrait. I tried. I tried my best. If you're watching this, though, the intimate portrait, there's just a pretty unlit tree, though, behind you, and some pretty trees, no dead animal carcasses. No. No dead animals. <laughs> oh boy. Um okay y'all, our AMA ask our AUA that's airing next ask week. Ask us anything. Anything except for what you've already asked us. Right. Um and that um for those of you who wanted to just still know about the coma, we're going to be sending a link and we'll put this uh in the Instagram post. That's okay. And that's actually a Dear Maddie episode. So yep. I think that you were on two or three times, so it's not hard to find. Um, I, yeah, it's not. It's, it'll be much easier to find that than a reality gays episode where. Yeah. There's exactly. your, it's in there with. Dear Maddie, I will <laughs> say was that uh, that show. It wasn't had awesome, a, but at theme. least stayed, it stayed on topic a little <laughs> bit more than we do. Yeah. Oh well. That's back when that's back when I cared more. Now I just turn on the mic. That's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like you I just I don't know, I still care. I just care about lots of different things. Lots of different things. Like I got a like lot you, to say. You turn on the you turn on the camera and piano cat goes where the wind goes. Yeah. <laughs> goes where the wind goes. Um I go where people need me. You go where people need That's you. So you've go. done. So you've done. I, uh, I honestly just called my mother during break and said I might fly home a day later because we have so much to do. Oh, and she no. actually, she was great with it. Honestly, that's oh, only good. Because, the only because I've got to go. You know, I've got to. Y'all have a friend. 
my friend Don. I've talked about her on Instagram a lot. Y'all, a lot of you have given money to her and her um, trigger yeah. warning, child abuse. But um, we've got to go to hearing now. So that's kind of delaying us. So because of that, my mother said, you need to do that for her. You go to that for her. You do what you need to do. Well done. Well done using Dawn's tragedy to help you get out of one more day with your mother. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh you know i don't mind my mother i love my mother um actually i get along with my mother quite well i'm not looking forward to the just arctic cold that awaits me i'm just gonna feel cold and just kind of my body's gonna hurt the whole fucking you're, time you're saying things like this and the people in the midwest or the 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 northern midwest <sighs> or in the, in the they're teens. used to it though they are used to it we are not yeah. My mother, I'm fine because what I do like is my mom will wa- make me watch bad movies, and then her boyfriend will put on Who YouTube wants to watch videos. Bad movies, but when we, the weather's pretty, my mom and I can go out. At least we can go look at stuff and shop, or go to craft stuff, and we won't be able to do any of that. Braid each other's hair. <sighs> yeah. Yes, I can do go. <laughs> may I love going makeup shopping with my mother. Wow, just. Hitting that stereotype right out of the park. <laughs> I, do, I enjoy spending time with my mother. I as, just as me as me who is ready to cook for their family this evening. <laughs> yes, and then your, decorate the Christmas tree. <laughs> I mean, it really is. And you know what? I had to like last time I was there for Thanksgiving. I had to buy my mother a tree and take. All, we really are just stepping into the gay male role of taking care of our mothers. This is how it begins, yeah. Poodle. She's just, wiping oh, off the wiping off the spittle on their chin. Oh, did your mother say to you all? My mom says, "I don't care if you put me in a home. Just pluck the hair from my chin, baby, please." Uh, I don't know about that. I think she's. Uh, I think that was so loud. A bird just hit the window, and it was oh, terrifying. God, that is terrifying. I could hear that from here. <laughs> Sometimes they'll, it's all windows in this room, and sometimes birds will hit, and it'll, it's so loud. My mother's got an entire bird sanctuary that she's created and feeds birds. Uh, We've talked about this before in her hatred of squirrels and chipmunks and other things. Yeah. They're everywhere. They're attacking. This is terrifying. We better start the show. Um, So, anyway, y'all, our AMA is airing our four part with our gay crappens with Watch What Crappens. Poodle, what movie are we talking about with them? We're talking about Falling for Christmas, otherwise known as Overboard in Snow, um, <laughs> or At Christmas Time. At Christmas, Lindsay With Lohan and Corey Over Street. A lot less clever, um, and huge plot holes. Huge. huge plot holes. And Jack Wagner. And Jack Wagner. Yes. All I need is a little more time to be sure what I need. Yes. Is it all in my mind? It's a good song. It is a good song. Oh, no. Now the sun's coming in on the others. Chris, Chris, Christina is pissed right now. <laughs> Although it's pretty golden like, you know. Um, so be, it's actually that's, reflecting off the other window. So, y'all, we're taking a break off the week of. And we think 90 Day is taking a break off, too. Because we think this tell-all, this four-part tell-all is going to air the entire month of January. Yeah. Um, so, don't think, though, we've abandoned you. We left you with a lot of content. So, we hope you enjoy. We had a good time talking with them for five hours. Yeah. It was a we that you'll get that content kind of the week of the twenty, like the twenty fifth through the first. It, no, it's I remember the first episode's dropping actually on the twenty third. Oh, and then it will start. So episode two will be on the twenty sixth. And then probably yes. And if you want yeah. the video of it, the video will be available on our Patreon tier and on if you're on Crappens, it's on their Patreon tier as well. And the audio will be available on the free feed or commercial free for those of you at the eight dollar Patreon tier. By the way, we just had somebody tweet us saying, "I've never paid for podcast content in my life, but oh my god, what the fuck is love after lockup? It's delicious. <laughs> it's." That season premiere did not disappoint. I still want you to watch an episode with your mother just to see what she says. You know, I need to do that and record some of the stuff. I'm going to sit her down and see if we can maybe I don't think they show a lot of reruns. Um, just show it on Sling. I don't think they have Sling. My mother's not going to watch television on a computer. No, you can't download the Sling app to their TV. They don't have a smart TV. I don't think so. 
Um, what do they have? A zenith? <laughs> <laughs> it, I, I, I don't think it is a smart TV. I think it, it's they. They have like a, they have like a satellite connection, and um, I don't know. I got to figure it out. You got to figure it out. So anyway, I think. But y'all, it is truly a great show. Uh, we just put the first episode out last week for free because we do that for the first season. But um, uh, the rest of it's going to be at the eight dollar tier. But we already saw an ad, y'all. That l- life is it. Life after lockup. That- Lilu, life after lockup is back. Uh, we'll be back in. I think they said ap- it'll be whatever. They're they're prob they're probably going to do these eight to ten episode seasons, which I kind of um, like. I like that better than like a yeah. good yeah. Also, then you don't get bad episodes. It's not yeah. like oh, I don't know a twenty two episode season. <laughs> not not mentioning any names. <laughs> hmm. Sharp, maybe cross pollinate a little bit. Yeah, take take ideas from one series and add to the others. So, but Lindsay's back. Lindsay and Blaine, hot Lindsay Blaine, and Blaine, uh, Sean and Sarah. Um, I Gab- we know Gabby from saw- this season's going to be on. Or no, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Justine, Justine, <clears throat> and Michael, and Michael. Um, and there was someone else I saw. Um, who was it? It was someone who I oh. I Brittany and Ray, who I don't need to see anything more. Oh, Brittany about. and Ray. Oh no. I know I don't really care. Although he is lo- getting real hot. True. I just think a lot of that was fake last I season. do too, but he is hot. Maybe I'll be into it. Ooh. I don't know. Michael's hot. Michael is everything is all I need, Jack Wagner style. He's this season. He's like he's really smart too. And that's there's, but the fact that he's hot and also he's not well, he's smart, but he's you can tell he's kind of cunning, which makes him feel like he would kind of fuck with your emotions a little bit. It makes me more attracted to him, and I need to process Ooh, that. He would like psychologically mess with me. Yeah. Oh, but we both need to process that. Let's get into the show. I'm all I need right to, now. I'm thinking about things. <laughs> okay, let's talk about. We're gonna talk about Joby Child. In Germany, in Boom, bing, 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 bing. This is the first time they didn't play uh, polka music. Um, it's their last day as a family for a while. Um, I'd like to get more enthused about this. I, I can't. Um, we we have we've discussed that a lot of this may or may not be fraudacity. Um, I also think that. Regardless, one of the things about their season is it's almost like what they choose not to highlight is what their pro or what their problems are. Their problems are Give me examples of that. Yeah, they don't really seem to be able to trust one another very far. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're highlighting it, but it's not it's not the huge issue. The issue seems to be that Jovi doesn't want Yara to stay in Germany on some humanitarian mission, which doesn't seem in her character. <laughs> no, it does not. Um, uh, and that he seems to be an asshole who thinks she's going to live in Europe. It's, it seems like those are the concrete ideas, but I think behind the scenes, it's what we're seeing more clearly is the fact that neither one of them has a kind of a bedrock of trust for the other. If that makes sense. Ding, 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 yeah. And ding, that's ding. a red flag. And I honestly don't think the only reason this marriage will last is if they have another child. So I completely understand why Jovi is pushing. Um, uh, uh, I, I think, I think Yara could stay married to him. Um, with, I think if you pass that three to four years, you've made it. Or maybe five years. Uh, I I think um, I think that's going to be so hard. But I think she does love him. That's that's what I see. I think she does. I wish instead of going to, but Jovi probably were talk about. We were talked a lot in part one about Usman and culture. But with Jovi and culture, instead of trying to have a kid, what if you actually went to couples therapy and actually like worked on yourself? Yeah, I. That's think not going to happen. He, He'd be more willing to do that than Usman, um, uh, more likely. But I don't know. If, I don't even know how much likely that. Don't would you think be. though, with that Louisiana culture, though, that that would be really hard for him to? Yeah, yeah. I think he's lived. He's lived out of it a little bit because he's never. He's he's left Louisiana. 
thank goodness. True. Um, but did you see the? Inst- I think someone tagged us. Did you see the Instagram of Mama Jovi with her mama? Oh yes. Yeah, Listen that is. That. I didn't even know speaking, what she said. She's speaking Cajun French, which was outlawed. Um, what? I yeah, Cajun French was not was not allowed to be spoken. Who outlawed um, it? I believe the state of Louisiana, because uh, along like Kate is if you do a Google search, like Cajun French was not was not allowed to be taught or spoken because it was a pigeon language. It was what do you uh, mean about pigeon language? I've never heard. Like you that never heard pigeon. Um, in other words, like a combination of several. Like you're speaking in pigeon English means like um, you're. Is that like when people say in, Spanglish? Yes, okay. you're bringing in. Um, uh, Kind of. Oh, there's Muffin. <laughs> uh Oh, can we? <laughs> let me see. I don't think she's gonna. I just saw her. I saw her body cross to the. Oh see. no. She's staring in, but she knows she's not supposed to go in this room. So, um, she'll probably move away. No, she's not. She's not coming closer. Is she so. not going in that room because she'll end up trying to play with the dead animals? No. Um, this is a sad story. <laughs> she <sighs> came in and and peed one time after 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 when she was a puppy, and my mother like yelled at her and screamed at her so much after she'd done it like two or three times, and she'll never come in the room again. <laughs> I didn't want to tell you, but you made me. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. So not only can your mother guilt humans into fear, but dogs. Her dogs. Dogs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um anyway, Joby and Yara. I don't know where we are. Uh, but yeah, Cajun French was oh, yeah. deemed uh degenerate and no wow. one's allowed to speak it. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure wow. now it's spoken more. But if you look up Cajun French, you'll look up the Wikipedia article. They, it's it's been like they've tried to. And this is not. This is not just a Cajun dialect. This is actual French, and it's spoken uh, in a kind of a Cajun way. Mm. Yeah. Ever, ever heard that? Heard that whispered in your ear? It's hot. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so they, okay, yes. Joby starts out by saying, maybe I've been too hard on Yara. Maybe, maybe I've been too hard on Yara lately. Joby. Uh, maybe I was wrong. And that's the thing. All the, the only apology you're getting is Joby saying, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I was wrong. I don't know. And I don't know. Maybe I said something. I'm like, I'm like, that's the apology you're getting. Take also, it. where did this come from? Where did this? It, it's this fake. Is why it felt fake. It was just out of the blue. We saw like. Why Kimberly and Usman doesn't feel fake is because we at least see the process of, and it makes sense. But this was just like, turn to corner. Next episode, changed your mind. Kim and Usman don't feel fake because this is the thing we go through every single episode. Well, that's at least every other episode. (laughs) Um, She still wants to say, and he's gonna, he's okay with it. Um, Yep. What, what I couldn't get over from Yara is Yara is the fact that she's like, can you tell me when you'll be going back? And she couldn't. She's like, I don't know. And I that may have been production, but if that was real and I was her husband, I'd be like, two months, three months? I kind of need to know when I'm going to see my child again. Yeah. So that's why it didn't feel real to me, that that statement. Um, I felt like it was all inflated for stakes. I call bullshit on it. I'm not really interested. I enjoy them, but I don't like fake stakes. Me no likey. I want a steak now. Yeah. Um, also, we don't get any closure on him and his friend or Karina. They're he just, just left. Karina's <laughs> <Karina's> just gone. just <laughs> gone. Um, I mean, her so, mother's there. We get a bit of her mother saying, you know, yeah. to Jovi, thank you for letting her stay here. And and she doesn't know. Uh, He's like, just have missed- an escape plan since you're right. in an active war zone. Our next and one. And they're saying goodbye. And this is the thing where it does feel real. And this is the thing where you know they are connected because Yara just breaks down crying. Yeah. Um, because and Miles upset. Yeah, because really she hasn't been without 
Jovi in, unless she's been in the U.S. Mm-hmm. So it does seem like a, a, something different. Um, and then she says, maybe it's time to b- build my independence. And if Jovi doesn't change, I don't know what I wanna, if I want to stay in this marriage. <sighs> I'd like Producer to believe that. Producer told her to say that. Yeah, yeah. Because Jovi it, says basically he echoes the same thing. Like, this is our roughest patch we've been through, and we're on different pages. I don't know how they'll work out. And I went... This is not rougher than dating and fucking in Barcelona and then finding out you're pregnant. And she, I'm sorry, this is not as rough as that. I agree. I agree. Going through a pandemic and you being gone for four months, this is that not as rough. rough as that. Having to rough a baby to she's raise in, a baby herself. She's in Europe where it looks beautiful and safe with her mother and you're working, talking with boys somewhere on a tanker and on lonely nights when the drinks are cold and the hormones are hot, things happen on an oil rig. And they probably don't shower as often as they should. (laughs) Why? (laughs) Why you got to ruin it? You know, I don't like smelly things. I know. That's why I want to mention it. (laughs) The thing is, that's more, uh, that's more appropriate. No one smells like old spice. On a tanker. God, you love male stench. I don't really. I just knew it would ruin it for you. <laughs> yeah, you've never had a guy lick your armpits? Anyway, <laughs> Bilal and Shida. Before we talk about Bilal and Shida, y'all, let's talk about a Maddie comic quarter. Okay, you can't use the same. You need to come up with one for your own. Oh, okay. Okay. Give me, hold on. No, um, there's no time. You don't have to do it do now. Mean? What do you mean there's no you time? Need to, you need to come up with a theme of your own. Because otherwise you're just copying me. Comic Corner! Okay. Comic Corner! You're a little off key, but that's okay. Perfect. Okay. I love that'll, that. That'll work. I love it. it and when we're be. in person, Comic I can... Comic Corner! I, uh, no, no, I'm sorry. I can't hear you. <laughs> and then when we're in person, I could spin around and you could say, turn, Wonder Woman, turn. No. Okay. What's your comic corner? Okay. You alluded to this earlier, but I'll probably edit it out. Um, so right. it's not spoiled because it's not the biggest thing, though. Um, but y'all, as you know, James Gunn, who did Guardians of the Galaxy and who does that show Peacemaker on HBO, which is a really great show with John Cena. If you haven't seen it, it's really fucking funny. He also I haven't did the- seen it yet. He also did the latest version of Suicide Squad, which is like the good one, not the first one with uh, that sucked. Jared I think, Leto. With, 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 no, he did the Will good Smith. one. Yes. Don't watch that one, y'all. Um, but the second last one was good. But, you know, he's now in charge. He's the new Kevin Feige of DC Comics. David Zaslav, speaking of Discovery. Kevin Feige, let, for, the, for the non-nerds, Kevin Feige is at Marvel. Who doesn't know Kevin Feige at this point? There Everybody are people who knows don't. he is not a what's his name poodle. I'm gonna what? I I would agree with you <laughs> that he's not a what's his name, but there are people who don't know. That it's a very in production kind of thing. People people in the in 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 Los Angeles know about studio heads, but people a lot of people who don't. I don't know. Them. I think people in North Dakota are very concerned. Anyway, keep going. So anyway, so James Gunn is going to be the new Kevin Feige. And so what they're talking about DC Comics, now that David Zaslav, who, you know, Discovery Plus bought HBO and Warner Brothers and all that shit, David Zaslav, rightly so, kind of, it's like, look, DC Comics movies have been bullshit and they've sucked and they've Mm -hmm. been sporadic and schizophrenic. And let's get, let's do, let's build it. And like, there's. The Flash movie, but then there's the Flash television show. Right. There's always there's a Superman sh- television show right now. He said, "Let's get it." He wants to make it integrated like Marvel, where everything connects, everything has a purpose, everything tells a story. Ooh, that's a big ass. It's a big ass. I personally am very excited about it. I think that's what needed to happen in DC Comics, Ooh. and what he wants to do is basically because Zack Snyder. Some people disagree, but I think a lot of people agree that Zach Zach Snyder kind of fucked up DC Universe because well, he, he wanted he he did his own way. He did it. He did and his it, all things, and it didn't work. It just didn't work. Um, and the reason it didn't work, it didn't work in the numbers because none of his stuff really made really did that much. I mean, Justice League Snyder because now some people like it, but 
and the box office, they th- those movies did not do well. Um, anyway, so if you yell Martha to a comic book fan, they roll their eyes because of that fucking Batman and Superman movie that was a piece of shit. But anyway, but I'm not a Zack Snyder fan. I know you don't know. Comic people know. Um, but the whole thing of why Superman and Batman stopped fighting is because Batman uh, uh, is Batman. Ben Affleck yells his mom's name, which is Martha. And Superman's mom is named the same thing, Martha. And that's what makes Superman not kill Batman. That seems really dumb. It's the stupidest fucking plot point in a movie. It's terrible. Anyway, so the whole point of all this is I'm actually excited. I like James Gunn as filmmaker. I think this is actually a great thing. However, though, Poodle. He did Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I said that. Thanks for listening. I didn't hear that. But as you know, what happens, Poodle, when you got shit all over your house? I just had to wave my mother off. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no. Um, but you got to clean. Is she going to come in? Do we need to pause the show? I just I just waved her off. Okay. It's okay. She got, probably made a face like, oh, fine, then. I can't go in my own <laughs> sunroom. <laughs> <laughs> she threw her arms in the air. Anyway. This is a place I can't go in my house. I can't go in my house because you're whatever. You're radioing. Doing uh, some kind of radio show. So anyway, James Gunn is going to like, they're, they're, they've been working out and bu- busting out a 10 year plan. He just announced that he's going to start with the Superman movie, probably as he should. However, uh, it was announced that Henry Cavill was not going to play was Superman. Was not returning. But yeah. what they're finding out is, is that Henry Cavill was recently in the Black uh, Shazam movie, or not Sam, with Black Adam movie with The Rock terrible movie y'all it did decent in the box office but the movie made no sense it was a bad movie it was not good yeah well they're saying that um that the rock is now getting flack because they realize everybody he promoted that henry cavill was in the movie and they had that just to make the movie people go see it and, and get their hopes up that superman was back and basically use henry cavill as a pawn to promote his movie but he didn't have the authority to do that I know. So, well, they apparently he's the one that fought for Henry Cavill at the end of that movie. He wanted him in it because he wanted him, Superman to come back. Don't. But, that's all. What? But what? What does he say? What goes on in that? It's in the that Rock. Universe? Yes, he makes whatever fucking money. The movie still did well because it's The Rock. You can make a place. You can make a movie called Walmart Greeter, starring starring The Rock, <laughs> and everyone would go fucking see it because it's The Rock. That's true, but as far as a universe, he's not concerned with a universe. No, he just wants to, but he's always wanted to play that character, and I think he's right for it, but the movie was terrible. Um, so that happened. Well, then what also happened is Patty Jenkins, the director of Monster and the director of both Wonder Woman's film, par- left the Wonder Woman 3 project was canceled. And I saw Patty, that. Patty Jenkins walked away from it. Apparently, mm-hmm. there's some rumors speculating that I think this is a bit of, of women being discriminated against, honestly. But there was a lot of a lot of comic, kind of sexist articles about Patty. Patty Jenkins is so difficult to deal with, and, and she wasn't she wasn't um, didn't want to compromise on anything, and blah 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 blah. And she wanted to do everything her own way, which she did that with Wonder Woman too. And that's not a great movie. It's okay. Whereas the first one was really good, but it was done more in committee. Well. She put out a statement. This, they don't talk about this. This is a big deal. Is these producers and directors never talk. Like even Henry Cavill put out an Instagram po- post saying, just kidding. I'm not Superman anymore. I just I met with that. James Gunn. I'm off of it. Well, Patty Jenkins put out a post too saying, basically, I wanted to do Wonder Woman 3. Um, I never, I was told that basically, basically she said that she didn't walk away from the project. She was told it was just, canceled it was paused for now mm-hmm. well then james gunn tweeted uh, tweeted her reply saying i've only had great interactions with patty jenkins and we've have a, been she's always been nothing but kind to us because the rumors were is that she was fighting with them well now the rumors are too that gal gadot is going to be let go of and not cast as wonder woman but Whoa. Then there, that came out but then now there's other stories saying it's kind of nobody knows now, some people at Warner Brothers are saying, or at Discovery are saying that Wonder Woman 3 is continuing. They just don't want Patty Jenkins to do it. But we don't know. It's always been like Patty Jenkins, Wonder Woman, or Gal Gadot, and Linda Carter, because Linda Carter was supposed to come back for a, a main role in that movie. Those three are very tight. So now they don't know 
what the fuck is going to happening. And now we're even finding out, which I'm kind of who Linda Carter is to our fans. You, you know what? <laughs> if you need to ask who that is, then you're listening to the wrong show. The original but, television Wonder Woman. Yes. This will be interesting to you, though. But now, because y'all, I re- read deep reddits and people with PAs that talk when they shouldn't and shit like that. Wow. This is <clears throat> way more intense than any Broadway corner I do. Well, apparently. So, you know, Flashpoint with, with and we've talked about that before. Flashpoint with Ezra Miller is Flash. That's like Michael Keaton was supposed to be in that movie. They were supposed to do Batwoman with Michael Keaton that, or Batgirl. That got yep. cut. Um, is the dog at the door again? Uh, my I'm seeing my mother put on her uh, her vest because like she's going out to deal with the dog. Oh, okay. God, Sorry, Muffin, we might as well walk since we can't be in the house. <laughs> yes, that's what that's, she's, she's saying. She's talking to her and she's like, "You're my best friend. You're my best friend, Muffin, <laughs> and you'll let me be around you." <laughs> God. Um, wish you could give when, me a hug. When, when your chit, when your kids are ungrateful, it's only your dogs. Only the job. Well. The this is very underground, so none of this is confirmed, but there is speculation that so Michael Keaton's already been taken. Basically, his part's been rewritten out of, um, uh, written out of Flash. He might be a very limited. It's supposedly one Gal Gadot was supposed to make a cameo on that movie. A lot of celebrity cameos in Flashpoint because that was supposed to be a coming together and putting everything back together. Well, now they made this movie when James Gunn wasn't a part of any of this. And he's like, nope, this is not the vision we have for this. So there, as of now, there's still airing Flashpoint, but now there are even rumors that because Flashpoint is about a lot of different flashes and all the multiverses, there's rumors that Ezra Miller might be recast at the end of Flashpoint, which well, is a big deal because he's so beyond problematic. He's a terrible well, piece of shit. They, his pronouns are they. Are they? I'm sorry, they. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That I shouldn't, even though he's a she's a shit, I shouldn't un, uh, fuck up his pronouns or their pronouns. Um, but yes, so they are. Um, they there's rumor that they are going to be recast as well. So well, there's been a lot of stuff going on around that that life. I kind of hope that happens. Um, also, apparently, um, uh, what's his name? Hot guy who plays Aquaman. Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa. That's it. Like, not a what's his name. <laughs> Ooh, not a what's his name. Well, apparently Aquaman, you know, they filmed Aquaman, but apparently, you know, with the Amber Heard and all that drama, they're probably going to air Aquaman. But after that, they're taking him out of Aquaman. They're literally just clean, which Aquaman, the first Aquaman wow. was a very, like, almost billion dollar movie. Right. So apparently they're cleaning this totally 100% just wiping away the, the slate clean. And the only person that we kind of don't know what their future is, is Gal Gadot. We don't know if she's going to be Wonder Woman or not. Anyway, that's the drama. Gal Gadot has not posted anything on social media, except for she posted what an honor it was to play Wonder Woman like a week ago. That was so much studio gossip. Oh, I feel I'm like- so into it. Message me about it, y'all. I want to know all the things. Never tell me my segments go on for too long. That was five minutes. <laughs> no, I watched the clock. It was like 14. Hate to tell you. Welcome to my Broadway Corners. Hey. You know what? Y'all, we're going to take a commercial break and we'll be right back. Well, we're back. Um, my mother is now going on a gator ride with Muffin. Because, as my mother put it, I wanted to see if you wanted to go, but you're. And I said, I can, if you wait about 15, 20 minutes, she's like, well, it's going to get dark. And she doesn't like running when it's in dark. Um, and then I said, and she's like, and obviously your father doesn't care about her, so I'm going to have to take her. <laughs> Did she said that? Yes. <laughs> wait, she's going on a, a gator ride? There's this little ATV we have to do like little things like feed fish or like you know so oh. stuff like that it's like an atv vehicle B- basically what a gator ride implies is muffin runs near the gator then jumps on the gator for a time jumps off the gator races the gator and it's fun for her and it wears her out partially yes yes and do you enjoy it's the gator thing. ride do you enjoy gator rides no it's very cold general um i would rather not go 
Oh, okay. <laughs> but my mother, my father's not home, and my mother's already pouting. Um, oh. So I thought I could make it better by going. And I was told, no, it's getting dark. I need to go. It's a martyr. Only a martyr should. <laughs> Let's get back to the show. <laughs> wow. Wow. Let's talk about um, Bilal and Shida. Them, Bilal and Shida. Oh. Um, Y'all, I don't know what's more sad. Those two or that pretzel. <laughs> It's so interesting. I guess a pretzel is such an American or really a German thing. And she's like, no, it tastes like cardboard. <laughs> I mean, I I don't know what she expected. I've never had a pretzel in New York. They're good. But don't don't expect it to be a revelation. It's just a dough with salt on it. I don't really love pretzels. They, I don't mind the kind that are like sweet ones, like cinnamon sugar ones. Like that's Auntie no, Anne's? That's a, those aren't real pretzels to me. Those Actually, I do like those salty ones, but you got to have it with cheese sauce. I don't like just a plain pretzel. It's a New York thing. They sell them everywhere. No, also, it's true. If you, can get them, if you can get them really hot, they're really good, I think. Um, y'all, they're in the last of their New York vacation A.K.A. the time they spent there probably before and after the tell-all that was paid for by production. Yeah. There were, ain't no New York vacation. Ugh. No. No. Um, Uterus left, but she says Uterus gave her a little bit of courage with everything yeah. going down. But they're going to see the Brooklyn Bridge. Um I mean, y'all, I wrote like four sentences for this. They kind of shot as like, this felt so produced where she said, I'm worried that conversation we had after the helicopter ride could end our marriage. Cut to Bilal talking to Shida saying, I'm worried about after that helicopter ride that that conversation <laughs> could be true. I mean, it was so just. I, I only want to talk because it's the same, same. Same song. I feel like I'm about first. to get dumped. I feel like I'm about to get poor Bilal. Notice, notice it's always his feeling. Um, yeah. And the, the, he basically says, he says, he basically says, I want time for us to be married. And again, this is what he wants. And I think he's trying to say, you should want this too. Um, he it's it's interesting how he sees it as weirdly unselfish to have time for themselves before a baby comes because he likes that time. Yeah. He doesn't really ask her if she needs that time. No, he just assumes she needs it. That's true. Um, he does assume. Yeah, it's 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 anyway, he says we need to build a foundation for our, before we start having a child. And what's interesting is I I don't know what the difference of building a foundation, if, if building a foundation for your marriage, how long does that take? Does it take another six months? Does it take another year? Does mm -hmm. it take another year and six months? I don't know if you can, you say, okay, we built the foundation. Like we poured the foundation gravel for our house. Okay, we're ready. Let's go. I, I just don't. Yeah, that's true. I, that's I don't. Point. I see that I, I could believe him if there was any type of specifics involved. There never is. He doesn't want a baby. He, he is doesn't. telling you every possible way, Shida. Yeah. At this point, you know. At this point, Poodle wants a baby more than Bilal. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And y'all know and how I would want a baby. That. I would want a baby just to, to, to absorb its essence and to hopefully get younger from it. <sighs> Um, and I like that Bilal's like, I said, you know, honey, they're walk. He, he said, you know, he said, I'm doing everything you're asking of me. You're not. And he says, no. and when I got that ult quickly, he said it under his breath. And when I got that ultimatum you gave me, I'm still not good enough. And I went, wow. Now it's uh, the ultimate tomb tomb. No, he's, he's created what he always does. Is the thing that's written in your marriage is an ultimatum. Sorry, go ahead. An alternate, an alternate reality. 
for Gaslighter. Um, That's the year of t- word of 2022. Well, Gaslighter, y'all. It is. And I wish we could I wish we could narrow it because this really is gaslighting. It, it is, really is, yes. It what that. it is is a lot of times gaslighting is meant to use something when someone is disagreeing with you. And that's and it's usually when gaslighting, gaslighting, we need to talk about the intention of gaslighting. It's all about the intention, which is to make someone now my father's home and everyone is trying to come and see me. Oh, no. Oh, I know. No. Oh, He's going to turn God. on the television. It's going to be loud. I, we hey, may friend, have to break it What you doing? Um, anyway, but uh, we um, – hopefully this is not loud. I may have to pause. Um, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm going to have to go over to my brother's house because they can't be, they can't be counted on to not interrupt. Um, (laughs) so I don't know where I was, honestly. Um, I was talking about gaslighting. Gaslighting has to do with the intent of making someone using your position of power of making someone doubting their own mental facilities. Yes. That's the most important thing. Making Using them a think position they're crazy for thinking that is layman's turn. Yes. Yes. Um, and and um, uh, basically establishing another reality. Yes. Um, yes. Not disagreeing with someone about how you feel or what was said yes. or anything like that. That's that's the most that that's the different thing. So if someone, so if if your husband is disagreeing with you or your wife is disagreeing with you, or your sister is disagreeing with you, that's not gaslighting. No. Um, it's more complicated than that. Yep. So I agree. Let's let's use the term, but let's use the term specifically Correctly. so it doesn't lose its meaning. Might be too late. But Bilal is a, y'all, he is a pitch perfect example of that this entire season. Yeah. Yeah, he really is. Yeah. So um, yeah. basically, that's all I've got is is uh, and and Shida says, "What says, will happen if we don't have children? Where will our marriage be?" Well, okay, you I, say that, and Bilal, um, <laughs> if can you just say, it's never enough. She keeps asking for. Although I think he believes that. I think he believes that oh, he, she's he, so taxing to him. He that after that. he has a child, then what's next? Because he believes women just take, 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 take. Because y'all look at his ex-wife and the monster she is. That's that, Shida is paying for that ex-wife. That's what she's paying for, really. Yeah. Shocking how ex-wife. she's not on this season at all because she realized she looked like a monster and I bet she'll never want to be on here again. Well, the interesting thing is I wonder how much of, I think uh, Shahida was already a problem, but I wonder how much of a bitter monster was created by being with Bilal. Oh, how much the rot happens by being with someone like that. Because y'all Bilal, Bilal is not, and I'm saying this in a way, Bilal is not a, it, he's not just not a good person. He's a really, and this is an over, over, overused word. Bilal is a toxic, diseased person who will infect everyone with what he has. He's one of the worst types of people you can run into in life. Just dangerous in every way. Ugh. Good luck, Shida. <laughs> I know. Good luck. Yeah. And people who the he's one of those people who people in work would know him and they're like, oh yeah, Bilal's such a good guy. It's so like oh, yeah, fucking sure. lifetime movies about him. Anyway, he needs family therapy, kind of like Andre and Libby. You know what the thing is though, Bilal would fool a therapist. He could turn it on so much so. Not a smart therapist. I don't know if he would Bilal. fool, but he could. But I think he wouldn't listen. He wouldn't. He wouldn't take any credence to what they said. Um, y'all. Speaking of therapy, so, it's time for family therapy. Say a prayer for Jean Malloy, because God Boy. bless that therapist. She had no chance. No, no she chance. Didn't. She didn't. No. Um, I liked it when she said, "Well, I didn't want to have to do this, but let me get out the let me get out the koosh. <laughs> the koosh of talking." Um, what do you think? What did you think about this? What did you think about 
the this family therapy session, do you think anything got resolved? No. Um, I don't think anything got resolved. And I thought I knew this family therapy session was going to go shitty because um, to be a good therapist, you need to have a get. We've talked about this in relationships, but also in a therapy room, you do need to have a bit of emotional capital. So and there and, and there needs to be a focus of why you're all there for therapy. Uh, so normally you would let the person who because she says, you know, the Chuck and Pamela are here and they wanted this. It'd be kind of like, let's say, I don't know. Uh, you're what, some guy that you've dated before. His husband wants to have family therapy with the mistress, you, and bring you okay. all into therapy. And basically, the 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 person, the husband, would be the client, and you probably wouldn't show up, but say you would. But anyway, um, <laughs> I'd have someone take notes for me, and then I'd <laughs> you bring. Uh, hi, I'm the messenger. I'm here for Jake. Yeah, um, this is the stenographer is going to take notes for yeah, just take, Poodle. But what a, there needs to be a point. He had a Brazilian of, scheduled. <sighs> not lie. There needs to be a point. There needs to be a point person. So where we kind of filter this information, not a free for all of everyone yelling at it. So let's say it was, let's say it was Pamela who was a point person. It would yeah. be Pamela. I know you've had a problem with Andre. Could you tell Andre what you, she would say that the ball would go to Andre. He would respond to that. Do anybody have any comments about what Pamela or Andre said? And you kind of pick up on things said instead of, so why are you here? What's going to, if this, it was. Everyone talk at once. Yeah. But there's no emotional capital because none of these people, I don't think, or maybe they are, are her client. The only time. Just to bookend it, but we can talk about specifically the only well, time we it saw it should have been Chuck because Chuck was the one who initiated. It should have been the, Chuck. Yeah, it should have been Chuck. The only time we and the main problem actually of why family therapy did not work is because Andre is the worst person to go to therapy ever. Ever, I, but don't you think it was he did not speak until all the other families? I just I he Andre spoke. But he spoke out of turn and also right. he did not – part of therapy is learning how to – like Libby was doing same things like, I hear what you're saying when you right. say blah, blah, blah. Libby was saying that because the therapist mirrored that, I'm sure, before and said – and Andre, the bull in the china shop, said, yeah. no, I will not mirror you, stupid idiot. He's name-calling. Like right. I will say his performance was the worst because there were some moments between Libby and Aunt, Libby and – Becky and even Charlie and Chuck where I went, I think maybe they hurt each other a little bit. Right. So yeah. that's kind of my overall thoughts. I think what'd you think? The Charlie part, well, Charlie starts out by blaming Andre for everything. Too. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. And see that I thought, I don't think you can go anywhere. No. If yeah. if your therapy session starts with that. Um, I was shocked Andre didn't respond then. I was too. Um, I was too. And and Chuck says um, that's that's not um, that's and Chuck says, you know, we this is some, we did find out that they were divorced um, that and then and and Lib says, listen, our normal has never been normal. Our normal is abnormal. And Chuck Chuck says, yeah, she grew up in a broken home. It's such, it's such an interesting phrase. A broken home where it's it's like an from an older generation of where she said three of the kids were with me and four were with her. And, and Chuck I says, wonder- I get that the kids were living with my ex. Excuse me. My name's my Pamela. Name Pamela. My name is Pamela. Boy, it just tells you everything, doesn't it? It tells you in I will in those sentences between Chuck and Pamela, that does. That tells you everything that these kids are just symptoms of of the parents who still hate one another. Um, did you hear? And then Charlie says, well, the problem started. Our family was fine until Libby married Andre. And then Chuck responds saying, 
No, my relationship with you has been strained for a long time because you would call me after your text at me after your drinking and say, call me awful things. And so Chuck is trying to say, this is how I feel about how you've treated yes, me. Yes, you call me. He, he gave examples. He said, you call me fucking stupid. You called me a woman. woman. Yeah. You call me all these. And Charlie and and Char, he said, you're the one that cut me. And Charlie gets defensive and yells and says, cut you off from what? Because Ch Charlie feels that way. The family he feels now, because he's a narcissist and, and he's or he's pretty self involved and he's an addict. Um, mm -hmm. He feels like the family's now because they've accepted him and go to basically because the rest of the family relinquished their boundaries. Charlie feels like he's one and the family's on his side now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which was which was the reason why Pamela should have never told the girls to to have had a party and invited Charlie and wanted the rest of her family to come because it yeah. muddied the boundaries that most of that family had tried to create. I'm telling you now, Pamela has always put Pamela first mm -hmm. in this family and the girls especially are paying for it. And the special boy who is Charlie. Yep. Yeah. It's, I wonder, I was thinking which kids went with who? That's what I would have liked to know. We know that she, we do know. Didn't you say Libby has other brothers? Yeah, that aren't in the show, so we don't know there, what those I, other brothers are doing. We, we see four. There are three others. I think the th other three are brothers. God, they have that many fucking kids. Yeah, there's seven kids, seven podcast kids. Wow. Um, so we and Megan basically says he had no will ill will at that barbecue, and y'all. Charlie walks in. We all, all remember that. Uh, Call the cops. I'm here. He tries to say he was joking. And Chuck brings him up. He says, you pushed him. You yeah. pushed Andre first. Um, and what's interesting is Andre says, uh, they're all saying this was all good before I, I, I came over. This isn't in, in the moment. But that's not true. They were broken a long time before I came, which I agree with. It's um, it's true. They were broken what, along. Yeah. What Libby says. After I want to say. I wish Andre would have spoke more because Andre did start to say things like "you're a drunk." The, the problem too with Andre was it's name calling. Yeah. It's name calling. Also, Andre never talks about. Andre never says, and I'm sure the therapist model this. If not, she should have. She should have stopped him honestly in that moment when he was yelling and said this of Andre instead of saying, "blah blah blah." But Andre literally can't do this. No, he, but he needs to say, I, I feel when you said this, I felt that because Libby yeah. was doing that. Now, what she did say is she said, what you're saying is not true because when, um, uh, Andre basically came in and I, she's like, it's all my mother effing family because Andre kind of opened my eyes to let me see what was happening. And so what we uh, find out is what. Y'all, Jake and I don't want to be right, but we called this. We said that this family has been a toxic, dysfunctional swamp. family yep. for a swamp for years, years. And we initiating see it, with, with even before the parents' divorce. You see that even like when Pamela was saying, where is the compassionate Liz? I really, I know, I really like, I can't stand Pamela. Oh, she's awful. She's she is absolutely awful. awful, awful, selfish person, I think. Mm-hmm. And I'm not yeah, just saying that because she's, she's homophobic, but I think her and Megan probably are a lot of like, and that's why Charlie married basically his mother. Ugh. Um, and Pamela basically says, why don't you, when you, you didn't tell me you were pregnant and like he's, and then they, they accuse Andre of trying to shut all of them out. And what's interesting, uh, Andre basically says, um, I think someone sabotaged me. Let me blah, have blah. ball. Let me have ball deep. <laughs> Let me. I'm not finished, yeah, Andre. I'm glad she did that because Th that's what this needed. It needed a lot more of Libby talking, honestly, and Andre not. Right. Um, I think she had probably told him, "Don't go in. Just don't say anything until the very." And he, I, I was surprised he didn't didn't start talking immediately, uh, and and doing that. Um. And the sisters said, they're like, can we get proof that the immigration person that told you that? And I'm like, so you don't believe Libby? She was there. 
No, they uh, don't believe believe it because they feel and, like because their thing is they feel like and Becky and Jen even ha- or Jen and Libby had this thing where Jen said like the pattern I see is that people are being isolated and Andre is a common denominator and we fear that you don't have a voice in this and right. Libby very y'all I say before I like Libby she really is the best she said like the whole I hear that and what you're mm-hmm. saying and my response to that is. He does not make my decisions for me. This is my decision not to tell mom about the, because Pamela brings up not being told about the granddaughter. She said, this is my decision. I chose to do this. And the sisters kind of went, okay, like that. And I don't know if it was authority. I don't, I don't know if those two sisters would ever, um, would ever, will ever believe Libby because it's so much easier saying, well, Andre is telling her to do that. I, I think, I actually think it is in the sisters. The thing is, it's the whole Stockholm thing. They can't turn their, they can't turn their allegiance away from their mother who has probably fucking lay has probably been terrible to them their whole lives but they Mm -hmm. can't turn on her because it's just too painful to do and libby i think because libby moved to another country she traveled she was always like the weird artistic kid she was already put out on the it's that idea of sometimes a person the most popular person feels like the most imprisoned because they have so much more to lose if they shuck Mm -hmm the author the shuck the community that they have so it's it would be something i think for those women to feel like their mother completely just turned on them because again y'all so much money is tied up in this family yep um that's all i've got uh is just them saying uh we there's like we don't know we what is i don't know what this means oh uh, they don't. That sorry, it's just no, mm-hmm. another thing from slamming. Um, mm-hmm. the him him, accu- him accusing them of pr- uh, doing anything with the immigration thing. I don't know if they would either know how to do that or they would even think about it. It still feels like a little Megan bit of a red says, herring. Like, like, Absolutely not. How will we know that? And Charlie's like, "Well, yeah. we do say, hey, immigration, what's up? What's up?" Um, I don't think they would ever spend that much time doing it. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I wouldn't put it past yeah. Pamela. I wouldn't. Yeah, put it maybe past Pamela. Pamela. Maybe and, Pamela. And remember, Becky fucking hit. I wouldn't put it past Becky. Yeah, that's okay. all I've got. Okay, let's talk a little bit before we done, y'all. Oh, with the trailer. We're we talk. If you haven't seen the trailer of the Tell All, you should watch it because. We're entering a new era of 90 Day Fiance, and I think this is the way it's going. It's not a tell-all anymore, but now it's a tell-all, and then they're now going to be going to dinner with cast members. They're now, it's basically like winter or summer house of, I'm telling you, we are two seasons. Or love is love is blind after the altar. I'm telling you, we are two seasons away from they're going to have a special of like 90 day fiance vacation. And it's just going to be all these people in a house in fucking Branson. And it's, t- <laughs> it's I'm telling you, that's what they're going to have. No, they'll, they'll all go to Florida because that's where they all are. Oh yeah. It's easier. They don't have to travel, but that it's going to be Natalie. Hey, it's going to be all these people together with exes. I'm telling you, I, I'm calling it now. We're going to get that spinoff. And Natalie shows up and there's a crib already in the house. And she goes, Creep! Creep! <laughs> what what did you think of this trailer for the tell all? Um, I did already expect Kim to say, Don't do this, don't disrespect my 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 potential, my, yes. my fiance. They're already together. Um I did not expect for Usman and Michael to be arguing. You um, see them having a conversation together. Yeah. Did you expect to see? Rose from Big Ed and Rose. It it mirrored what the single life tell all did. Now, what they do say is, Ro- Ed, if you talk to Rose, why would he talk? I feel like this is fraudacity. Why would he talk to her? I know. I feel like that's fraudacity. Yeah. Um, but I was happy to see her. She looked good. You yeah. know she's gonna be shady as fuck. But I think that's about uh, that's. You I mean, see, Jovi something. telling Andre. Jovi says, "Like, what if you're the problem? Maybe it's you." 
And I was like, what do you mean? What do you mean? What's the problem? So I'm upset because we shouldn't be having to do this. It just looks, it's total com- producery. It's not fakery. It's producery. It's producery. And, and I'm afraid I'm going to really enjoy it. I think you'll like it more than me. Um, that's about everything. <laughs> Y'all, that's the show. That's the show. We got to go because Poodle is staring out like his captors are about to come back. I don't know what's going to happen. I may be waterboarded soon. Get your shit together. We've got to do our um, class. Let's say I'm below deck say, tomorrow. Recommendation for me. This is, this is, I'm late to the party, but I watched uh, Netflix's Wednesday and oh, it's so Wednesday. good. Isn't it so good? Thoroughly enjoyed it. It's Tim Burton, Danny Elfman music. It's smart. I already talked it's, about it on the show. Oh, I don't remember, but that's fine. I, if I say it first, it can't be a suggestion, but now you've thought of it and now people should watch it. I don't remember you saying you've watched it. So, <sighs> Gary, <laughs> I highly recommend it. This uh, the show. That's the show. That's the show, everybody. Go to our website, realitygates.com. Uh, go to our Instagram, Reality Gaze Podcast. Our Reality Gaze is on TikTok. We appreciate y'all so much. Uh, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. If you don't know how to do that, then you can go to our website. And again, if you want to get Love After Lockup, you're going to have to join the $8 tier of Reality Gaze Plus. And don't forget, Love in Paradise will be on Wednesdays on the free feed. Yay! So you got a lot. Y'all got, you're going to miss a lot. I got to miss a it. lot. All right, everybody. Pray for Poodle. Pray for Poodle. That <laughs> he's going to get attacked by a ram in the middle of the night or God no, or Maybe. Muffin just, or Muffin just grabs you by the throat and ends you. <laughs> she, that That's more believable. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time. But until then, we call these people Lonely Hearts, Poodle, because aren't we all just Lonely Hearts looking for love in all the wrong places? Yes. And if you don't know Kevin Feige from David Zaslov, call us, because we barely do. <laughs> <laughs>